Okay, let's get going then. So tonight we're talking about the Wild Atlantic Way. Um, and I'm going to be sharing with you my favorite places on the Wild Atlantic Way and give you some tips about what to do should you go there yourselves. Uh, and then at the end, we'll have some questions. So in case nobody was online or somebody was online, not online last week, this is a little bit about me, Gary France. Uh, I rode quite a lot when I was young, got married, had kids, sold the car um, and for a more practical, uh, sold the bike for a more practical car. I bought my first Harley in 2006 and I retired from my main career, which is in construction project management in 2010. And I did a 21,000 mile ride around America, wrote a book about that. I've ridden in 28 different countries and 29 different states in the USA. And in 2013, I set up Tour One, a Harley Davidson motorcycle touring company. Um, I have, we've previously run tours to Ireland, um, but well, not at the moment. And so this isn't like a marketing thing to sell you know, our tours to Ireland. It's just a genuine attempt to tell you a little bit about, a little bit more about a fantastic place to ride. So introduction to the Wild Atlantic Way and getting there. Uh, just a bit of orientation first. Some of the um, main important cities in Ireland. Uh, of course, Ireland is split into two. Southern Ireland in, at the bottom and Northern Ireland at the top. So there's Dublin, Belfast, Londonderry right at the top of Ireland, Sligo over on the west coast along with Galway and Limerick and right down the bottom is Cork and over on the right hand side is Waterford. Uh, there are three Harley dealers in Ireland in Belfast, Dublin and Waterford. I don't think there are any more. Um, and something quite interesting about Ireland, it's only 280 miles from top to bottom. Just remember that figure, 280 miles, because there's an interesting fact coming up that compares to that. And the Wild Atlantic Way is a tourist route on the West Coast, and it's 1,600 miles of roads long. So how do they do that in 280 miles? Well, uh, it obviously follows the coast, um, and um, there is more than one road on the Wild Atlantic Way. It's made up of quite a few roads. There's obviously the main road that follows down the coast like this, but then there are lots of little roads that shoot off of it to go down to the beaches or to uh, other interesting places. So there's a total of 1,600 miles, which is quite a lot. Um, and the Wild Atlantic Way runs from close to Londonderry in the north. Londonderry is actually in Northern Ireland and the Wild Atlantic Way starts right on the border near Londonderry. And it goes all the way down to uh, Kinsale in County Cork. Uh, it's obviously most of the Wild Atlantic Way obviously faces the uh, Atlantic Ocean and it takes quite a beating from uh, the waves and the storms coming across. And so uh, the uh, Wild Atlantic Way, or the, the coast has really, really been shaped over millions of years uh, by the Atlantic. There is spectacular scenery on the uh, west coast, on the Wild Atlantic Way, and here's just a few pictures by way of introduction, and I'm going to talk about all of these uh, during this talk, and it is absolutely stunningly beautiful in some places. This is on the Ring of Kerry on the northern coast, uh, it's a, I can't you know, stress enough the, uh, just how beautiful it is. Uh, you get roads of all sizes on the Wild Atlantic Way. Uh, and obviously, as I said, it hugs the coast. And here's a few pictures of typical roads. You know, there are regional roads. There are small local roads. There's all sorts of different sizes, big and small. Uh, you'll find yourself on quite a few smaller roads if you ride uh, a lot of it, and that's all part of the fun. You even get a few sheep on the road. Um, I didn't write this, but I think it's really appropriate. It says the sun doesn't shine every day of the year, but when it does, you are rewarded by something really special. And I agree with that. You know, Ireland can be a bit wet, a bit cloudy, because it gets its weather from across the uh, across the water, bringing lots of moist, warm air. Um, so it does rain a lot, but when it's sunshiny, 
it's an absolutely spectacular place. And here are just a few pictures, a few glimpses. And again, I'll talk about every single one of these pictures of um, the Wild Atlantic Way and um, just the, the wonderful scenery that's there. A big, big range of different types of scenery. Okay, so getting to Ireland, this is quite interesting because not just how to get there, but what you can do on the way. Um, obviously, if you're all of us, we would presumably all travel on our own bikes by ferry uh, from the uh, UK mainland. And you can go from Stranra straight across to Belfast. You can go from Holyhead, a direct route straight across to Dublin. Or you can go from Fishguard to Ross Lair or Pembroke Dock to Ross Lair. So there's lots of choices on how to get there, depending on where in the UK you are. But there's also some pretty fantastic places en route to get to the docks. Um, for example, if you're going via Stranra, you can go through the Lake District. Going to Hollyhead, you can ride through the fantastic Snowdonia or the Brecon Beacons if you're on your way to Fishguard and Pembroke. So just even getting to the ferry, you can have a pretty good uh, motorcycle ride before you leave England or Wales. Um, it's not so relevant for us, but for visitors from overseas, you know, what happens if you want to fly to Ireland and then rent a bike? Well, there are two international airports, uh, obviously in Belfast and in Dublin, but there are quite a lot of regional airports as well scattered throughout and some of them are absolutely tiny i've used the one in waterford quite a few times and it literally is a runway and no more than a, a few porter cabins uh the two big motorcycle rental places there are not many places to rent bikes in in ireland but you can rent them in belfast and dublin and i'll say something about that towards the end of the presentation so where are my top 10 places on the Wild Atlantic Way? Um, well, I'm going to cheat by actually having 11 because the Giants Causeway isn't actually on the Wild Atlantic Way. It's in County Antrim, right up in the north. But if you were going to start in the north and try and ride the whole of the Wild Atlantic Way, you would obviously be, uh, it would be a bit silly not to go to the Giants Causeway because it's a UNESCO World Heritage Site uh, and it was formed by volcanic action under the sea and it created uh, about 40,000 hexagonal basalt columns um, all linked together and it's quite remarkable how they are all, most of them are hexagonal, not all of them. And of course there was a great legend, why is it called the Giant's Causeway? because there was a, uh, an Irish giant with a fantastic name called Finn McCall, and he was said to be challenged to a fight by uh, the Scot uh, Ben and Donna. And Finn, and, or Finn accepted the challenge and built the causeway to get over the sea to, uh, to fight the Scot. Um, you can go to the visitor centre on the Giant's Causeway, or you can just walk down the path and go to uh, scramble across the rocks be careful, it can be very slippery and uh, you can get a bit wet on a uh, stormy day. But on the main part of the Wild Atlantic Way, my first favourite place to go to is Dula Valley in County Mayo. Uh, this is a, it's a valley with a big freshwater lake and the lake is about two and a half miles long by about a mile wide. And um, I can remember when we were there uh, taking uh, a few people uh, around the Wild Atlantic Way a few years ago. We stopped here, took some pictures, and I think we were there for about 20 minutes or so. I think we saw probably one car. It's a very narrow road. It's very quiet. Not many people drive through here, uh, but it is on a nice, sunny, clear day, a fairly beautiful place. Uh, it's a very steep-sided valley. Uh, caught, uh, taken uh, and it uh, was worn down by the ice age and so it's a very smooth valley and um, 
I love these trees in the middle of it, those five or six trees, very spectacular. It makes a great background to the, uh, you know, to the, to the boats that are there. But Dular Valley was the scene of a um, part of uh, a bit of a tragedy, not a bit of a tragedy, a huge tragedy back in Ireland in the about 1850 uh, when there was a, uh, a great famine. Uh, at that time, Ireland really was uh, sustaining itself, living off one crop, potatoes. And, that, the, and for about four years running, the potato crop failed caused by blight and over a million people died of starvation in Ireland and about a million people left as well. And Dular Valley, there was quite a few people heading south um, uh, to try and find some food um, and they stopped here and sadly a lot died here. Uh, in their quest to look for food, and that picture is a memorial to the uh, to the dead who died in the um, in the valley. My second favourite, number two, is Sky Road in Clifton. It's in County Galway, and Sky Road is a road that goes out along a peninsula from Clifton and comes back to Clifton. It's not very long. It takes about I don't know. It's probably only less than ten miles long. Um, and it runs down both sides of the peninsula on a loop road. Uh, on one side of it, there is an upper and a lower road. And most people uh, who go out there ride on the upper road because you get better views. And this is looking out along the peninsula to the islands and the water out ahead of you. And once you get towards the end, there's a parking area and you can look back uh, to uh, back along the peninsula and that is Clifton in the uh, in the distance, and you can see the road twisting and winding its way uh, along. That's the upper road. The lower road it, uh, stops at about where those houses are. Uh, the view over the bay and the islands uh, is fairly spectacular. Here it is. Uh, you can see. Um, I'm not sure if you can see it, but oh, I can see probably. Uh, uh, 15 or uh, maybe 20 islands on, in that picture. It's a fairly stunning place on a nice day. My favourite place, number three, isn't really a place because it's a cultural region in County Galway. You won't find the Connemara on any maps, or if, the, you know, if they are, it's indicative only, because it's the Connemara celebrates a culture and not a place. Uh, it is stunningly beautiful. Uh, this is Killery Harbour, a natural harbour that, uh, inlet that comes in uh, from the Atlantic. And when we were there, we stayed over on the left-hand side in a small hotel in a town called Linane. Over, and this was, we had a view like this uh, as we looked out of the uh, hotel window um, yeah, uh, from um, yeah, overlooking the harbour. As you head south through the Connemara, you will see uh, Carlmore Abbey, which is a very, very nice place for monks that used to live there. Stunningly beautiful with that big hill as a backdrop. Um, you have to actually pay to go into the house of Carlmore Abbey, and that takes quite a long time to walk around the grounds and have a look at the house itself. So what I do when I'm there, if I'm taking a group there, we just nip into their car park, park up, walk about 100 metres down their uh, access road to this viewpoint uh, yeah, where you can look at the house and photograph it across the water. Um, I think you'll agree, pretty spectacular place. Uh, so is this. This is Derry Clare Loch, um, a bit further down. It's uh, a freshwater lake uh, with the 12 Pins Mountains behind. Um, and... On a nice, still, clear day like this with a blue sky, it just looks fabulous. Uh, I love this place. Even on this day, the two sheep came along and stood there eating away just to really finish off the picture perfectly for us. Um, as I said, the 12 Pins Mountains are in the back. I've scrambled up those um, mountains. before. They're not really mountains. They're very big hills. And if you're feeling athletic, leave some time to go up there because you're rewarded with a view like this. Um, I didn't take this picture, but um, looking out across uh, the, uh, the coast and some of the islands and the Atlantic, absolutely stunning. And it's not too difficult a walk to get up there.
takes about an hour or so. Number four on my list is the, are the Cliffs of Moa in County Clare. And these are said to be the most visited tourist attraction in Ireland. Uh, just before you get there, as you're heading south uh, from Galway, you pass uh, Dungary Castle, which if you're a Game of Thrones fan, uh, you might recognise because it was one of the locations for that TV series. There's another view of it. The castle is open to the public. Um, it's um, I've, Although I've never been in there, I just like to stop and look at the view of the castle across the water if the tide is in, because you can see the water on the left there. That is actually part of the Atlantic. Uh, the Cliffs of Moa obviously are on a very rugged part of the West Coast. Um, these are the main parts of the, uh, the cliffs and you can see a small tower on the top of the cliff and the visitor centre for uh, the Cliffs of Moa is just to the right. Um, they're pretty impressive. They stand about 700 feet tall uh, and they last for about nine miles. And you can walk along the top of them. There's a path along the top and you can go in either direction. You, you, you don't need to walk very far to get a couple of spectacular views. There you go. It's 215, 214 metres high. It's a long way down. And uh, a few people fall off each year, apparently. It's, um, so take care when you're going along there. So there's that tower that you could see uh, with the visitor centre. The visitor centre is quite clever because it's built partly underground, so it blends in uh, very nicely with the scenery. Uh, it's quite expensive to go into the Cliffs of Moe. You actually, to get there, you know, to walk in is free, but you, you pay to park. I can't remember how much it was. They've got a good motorcycle parking place there, but I seem to remember it was quite expensive. Uh, number five on my list is going further south this is um in county kerry on the dingle peninsula and it's called connor pass um you must not miss this if you go uh if you go to dingle it's um it's only about the bottom of the pass there's only maybe five minutes from the town so it's well worth doing and the beauty of it is you're not allowed anything other than cars and motorcycles over the top and so there's no trucks no camper vans because the road is quite narrow and so they can't pass each other so so they're not allowed uh doesn't go up very high about 1500 feet and this is the approaches to it on the northern side but it does get quite steep and narrow um as you can see this was taken on quite a wet day and um you know you can just about get a couple of cars past each other it is two way um, but you can't that you can see why they don't want trucks or uh, camper vans. There's a small waterfall on the way up on the northern side. Uh, very pretty to stop and look at. And there's one of the few places where you can quite readily park on the road. Oh, sorry, off the road. But as, uh, right at the top, there's a fabulous view. Um, this is at the top from the parking area at the top. And, and to get up to... Uh, here we'd have just ridden the road is actually just on the right hand side of the uh, the picture there as it winds its way up and you can see the lake and the Atlantic in the distance. This is the best bit though for me this is the other side this is the southern side or the dingle side and apologies for those who have not ridden much recently or haven't ridden on some nice roads uh, as we all haven't but just you know just think about riding this road just cranking your Harley over here, taking it bend after bend. It is a fantastic road to ride. We normally ride it either three or five times, just, just for the heck of it. It's, um, it's about, I don't know, going up this side, it's about four or five miles long. So it's quite easily doable to ride it a few times, as it says there. Uh, number six is the on my list is the whole of the Dingle Peninsula in County Kerry. As you can see, it's quite a big peninsula, and Dingle, you know, the town of Dingle, is about halfway along it. Dingle is a small town; it's only got about two thousand people live there, but it gets very busy, very popular. You definitely need to book somewhere if you're going to stay in Dingle. 
Um, I've stayed before in a pub just at the top of this hill, a pub bed and breakfast place. And um, when you go walk along the front in Dingle, there's quite a few pubs that play traditional Irish music. It's a, it's a nice place to stay. Um, since 1983, it's been visited by Fungi the Dolphin. And here he is. Um, uh, he, um, the dolphin loves human interaction. So it swims up to boats or people on wakeboard, not wakeboards, on those boards that you stand on and row. Uh, it just loves um, you know, seeing people and, as I say, interacting with them. There's, either a, there's even a um, statue of Fungi in the... Uh, in the middle of the town. But the best thing about uh, Dingle Peninsula is riding Sleighhead Drive. Uh, I never know whether it's Sleighhead Drive or Sleighhead Drive. I think it depends where you're from. Um, a stunning, you know, the peninsula gets narrower as it goes towards the end and you really get the waves crashing in. Uh, even on a stormy day, it's quite, a, it's quite a place to go and see because the road runs along the top of these cliffs and you, know, you, you get the Atlantic uh, waves coming, you know, you know, hundreds or thousands of miles, building up um, a bit of um, momentum behind them and crashing into the rocks. It's quite a place to see. And the road actually runs along the top here. Uh, you can maybe see on the left-hand side of this picture a small stone wall. That's a parking area where you can stop and look down. Uh, I've been there on a really wild day where the waves... The spray from the waves has been, it's been so windy, it's actually been raining upwards uh, with, the, with the spray being pushed up by the wind. Uh, there are some wonderfully dramatic views. Uh, here's a part of it. Uh, you can see a couple, I think the, um, the, the beach over there is, um, uh, you can get round uh, to that side. I think there's another picture of the beach coming up. Yeah, here it is. So uh, you can see a couple of beaches there. You can get onto some of the beaches. It's quite steep. There's a track or a small road that you can ride a motorcycle down to get to the, that end beach. Uh, you have to be a bit brave, though. It's quite steep, quite narrow, and uh, turning your motorcycle around at the bottom, especially if it's a big old tour, is quite a, quite a feat. Uh, I did try it once. Number seven on my list is the Ring of Kerry, the biggest peninsula in the south uh, in County Kerry. Uh, again, it's quite spectacular, quite long. This one is 111 miles all the way around. And it goes around the, obviously right around the Kerry Peninsula. And it is stunningly beautiful. This first picture is of a place called Ladies View. Killarney is, um, there's a Harley just gone past. Uh, Killarney is, um, right down at the bottom here, uh, right at the end of the valley. And the road out of Kalani comes up, follows this lakeside and comes all the way up here. It is a spectacular road, quite narrow. You know, two, two cars can just about pass on. There are some passing places, but it's, uh, it's a fantastic motorcycling road. It's called Ladies View because Queen Victoria stopped here and her ladies in waiting got out and had a look at the view and they stood somewhere near where this photo was taken and so they named it Ladies View. Uh, this is also on the Ring of Kerry where the road goes under a couple of um, uh, outcrops of rock. I love these. And as I said, you know, wherever you go, if you get up slightly higher, you get some terrific views. This is on the northern side of the Ring of Kerry. This is actually taken from a parking area. And um, as you can see on a nice day, fantastic. You can't really beat it. Look at these, uh, these fabulous pictures. The road around the Ring of Kerry is a little bit bumpy though. If you're on a big tour, it's not so bad. But if you're, you know, I wouldn't want to do it on a crotch rocket or a sports bike or something. You know, you'd end up with the, uh, you'd be quite uncomfortable uh, it's getting better most a lot of the ring of Kerry the roads are they're not the best in the world but you're not going there to go fast you're going to take your time and so it's not too bad this is one uh, I think this is quite near ladies view one of a uh, hundreds of lakes that you could uh, stop and take pictures at here's a good tip um, 
around the ring of Kerry, so the, the coaches can't really pass each other. So all coaches have to go anti-clockwise around the ring. Um, so you should do the opposite because a lot of cars get stuck behind the coaches because they can't overtake and you know, it makes it difficult to overtake like 10 cars and a coach. So always, always go clockwise around the ring of Kerry. It makes it so much better and, and quicker and more enjoyable. This is right down at the western end. Um, it's a, a nice sandy beach, although you don't get many people in the sea because this is the Atlantic after all. But the really good thing about this, uh, this beach is just on the right-hand side, there's a fantastic cafe uh, that sells the most wonderful fish and chips, a sort of a, a biker's uh, nirvana. Uh, that's the same place uh, uh, with the two arches across the road. There are two other places that are on the Ring of Kerry, not actually on the Ring of Kerry, but they are on the peninsula of Kerry, and they are the Balagbina Gap and the Gap of Dunlow, and these are definitely worth going and riding if you can find them. So these two make up what I call number eight on my favourite list, and this is where they are now. They're, they're actually very close to each other. They're only a few miles apart. Um, and this is the Ballad Beamer Gap first, an absolutely wonderful steep road that's quite narrow. And you can see it's narrow by the uh, single black line up the middle. It's, the road is only just about wide enough for, the, for a car and a sheep. Uh, but it's very steep. You know, can you imagine just riding up there? Great fun. Really good. Uh, and here's a, uh, a group we took. This is, stand, this is right at the top. It's not very high. You know, it's a small pass road but it's definitely not to be missed. If you're staying in Killarney, definitely go out and ride this road. That's the top as well. And another great road is the Gap of Dunlow. So this is another valley and Killarney is just literally about four or five miles away from where I took this picture when we were out riding BMWs one day. Uh, so it's very close to Killarney. And um, here is um, here's a picture. I think somebody might recognize one of these bikes here. Um, I think that might be Bev Beach's bike there, wouldn't you say, Bev? Um, so this is where we stopped and uh, took in the view to uh, on the Gap of Dunlop. It's quite a technical road. It's quite narrow. It's got some very sharp hairpin bends on it. But if you're, you're a reasonably accomplished rider, it's no problem at all. You can see how narrow the road is. Um, uh, that's what, if there's probably no more than eight feet wide. Uh, the next great place to uh, go and have a look is on the Ring of Berra, and it's called Healy Pass. The Ring of Berra is, uh, has a road going all the way around it. Um, but personally, I like to not ride all of it, but go over Healy Pass. It has some great views on the way up. Uh, there's some very scenic photo stops. Again, there's no real parking areas to speak of, but yeah, there's enough room to pull over at the side of the road you know, on your bikes and stop and take some pictures. It only goes up to about just over a thousand feet or 334 meters, but it's a very twisty road. Uh, this is, as the picture says, it does what it says on the tin. This is, um, the top of Healy Pass, and it's a nice twisty road. I normally go down, you ride this way down to come out of Healy Pass, and I normally ride down there, lay on the grass on that, uh, on that bend and photograph people as they ride, um, as they ride around the bend. Again, I think um, Bev uses a picture that I took um, of her going around that bend, uh, it's great riding this road. Uh, that is, in fact, my son cranking his or his my street glide over. One of, and um, I've got to say, I'm a bit jealous of how far he can lean that thing over and still be safe. Um, look how far! You know, I've never seen you know, uh, quite a lean on a street glide before. Um, if you think that um, some of these roads might look a little bit technical and twisty well uh, you know, if you can ride a chopper like that around these sort of roads you can ride just about any sort of a harley 
so it's okay to ride. Number 10 on my list is Blarney Castle in County Cork. Um, it's a great place to visit. There's the castle itself, the tower. Can get a bit busy in summer, but if you if you want to walk up the steps, it takes, I don't know, it doesn't take very long to walk up there. And uh, uh, it's well worth getting up there and the view is very good. I'm not sure that many people would want to kiss the Blarney Stone at the moment with coronavirus, but um, you lay on your back, grab hold of two iron rails and kiss it leaning over backwards over a big void. I don't know, a couple of hundred feet down. Uh, you can't actually fall and the guy holds on to you to make sure you don't fall. So if you kiss the Blarney Stone, you're said to be given the gift of eloquence or the gift to be able to talk quite well. Um, if you've ever been to Killarney, some of you may have been to the Bike Fest there. It's held normally at about the end of May or early June, depending upon when the bank holiday is in Ireland at that time of year. Uh, if you can combine riding the Wild Atlantic Way with going to the Killarney Bike Fest, that's a really good thing to do uh, because you get uh, the benefit of a, uh, a rally uh, in Killarney as well. It's not the biggest of rallies, but it's very it's very friendly. It's held in the uh, in the grounds of the Brehon Hotel and the Irish National Event Centre, and there is uh, Marjorie Ray just leaving the. Uh, the, uh, the rally to um, lead the parade. Um, there's a, a big parade rides around the, uh, the town of Kalani, and I think just about everybody in the town comes out and waves and, at the bikers as they go past. It's a, great, it's a great little rally, well worth going. They have lots of bands, you know, um, they have a couple of stages, but it isn't very big, but very friendly, great fun. They have some ride outs to some of the places that I've shown you. You're know, riding up through Ladies View and some of the Ring of Kerry. They don't do the whole thing, but uh, well worth a visit. So part three of my talk, tips on where to stay, renting, and you know, a few things about riding in Ireland. Um, Ireland is a full of culture, very traditional, a bit old fashioned, but that's the beauty of it. There are some you know, fabulous places to go and see, go and eat in. You know, quite often, you know, um, you know, you can combine uh, the riding in Ireland uh, with you know, going and seeing lots of places. It's not a place to rush. You want to soak up some of the atmosphere. You want to go and listen to Irish music in bars. You want to go into pubs. And eat in pubs. It is you, you. The culture is quite different, and it's uh, really what makes it. There are lots of different places you could stay in Ireland on the Wild Atlantic Way. Uh, bed and breakfasts are very good. They're very friendly, and you obviously you get the benefit of being able to talk to the locals, and they can tell you a few good things about places to go and see. There are some good pubs. We stayed in this one once. Um, this is in Dingle. Uh, they can be quite loud. Um, because they're obviously very social places, but they can also be very handy. And what I mean by that is you don't have far to stagger to get to your bed. Um, hotels, are, there's hundreds of hotels. This is a great one uh, in um, near County Wexford where you get the ferry from in Ross Lair. But beware of booking hotels in the big towns like Dublin and Galway. They're very, very expensive. They... They can charge a premium because those places are so expensive. So don't go to, don't stay in big hotels right in the city centres, in the popular city centres. Um, the Irish are very welcoming towards bikers. They're very welcoming towards everybody. So uh, that's a great thing. Um, the, uh, the temperature and the weather, it's actually quite warm in Ireland. You know, in the summer, you know, you'll, you'll experience about 20 degrees in July and August, which is fabulous temperature. You do get a bit of rain, though, um, you know, because the, um, it's obviously called the Emerald Isle because it's very green. Uh, it doesn't get that from being dry. It gets it from being wet. So take your rain gear. July is probably the best month, July or August. You get slightly less rain in July. So that's when I would go unless you go 
uh, in at the end of April or the beginning of June to combine the Kalani Bike Fest. And as I've said, you know, don't rush. There's absolutely no need. You don't want to be doing loads and loads of miles a day. Take your time and really enjoy the place. Um, okay, some Irish pubs uh, don't look very friendly from outside. This one doesn't look too bad. And you might think, oh, I'm not sure I want to go in there. Do it. As soon as you walk across the threshold, you know, the... Uh, the atmosphere is wonderful. You will be welcomed and you'll get a lot of great food. So try and eat lunch in pubs. Um, and you know, it's, um, you definitely get a lot of culture because stopping and talking to people, as this says, is all part of the experience. Now, this looks a bit odd, doesn't it? A guy sitting on a motorbike uh, in a pub. Let me tell you this story. This is a great example of the warm, friendly welcome that you'll get. Uh, this guy is an American. I was taking a private group around uh, the whole of uh, the British Isles and we went through Ireland. And uh, this guy was talking to the landlady and she was telling him that she was learning to ride a motorcycle. So uh, he just asked about what sort of bike it was and she took him out the back and showed him. And she said, hey, look, yeah, for a laugh, ride it through the pub. And he did. It was one of the funniest things I've ever experienced. Um, and here she is sitting on the back of the bike uh, out of the front of the pub, you know, having a right laugh you know, with him riding around in the car park. Priceless. Uh, when you're riding on the Wild Atlantic Way, um, there are not many petrol stations. So in some places there are. So if you, especially if you've got a small tank, take a lot, every opportunity you can to fill up. Um, the, some of the petrol stations are literally a petrol pump and a very small shop so don't expect to buy sandwiches and your lunch you know you might get some that you can do that but you know, don't rely on it um ireland just about has the best set of road signs and the best road numbering system that i know um and i'm talking of southern ireland there but first look you know, northern ireland obviously uses pounds in the north and it measures its its distances in miles but in the south island is obviously part of the eu so it uses uh, euros and it measures its distances in kilometers um, do you need a passport to get over there no you don't if you're british or irish but you do need id so you can just get on the ferry with your driving license personally i always like to take my passport belt and braces approach and if you're flying in from abroad, yeah, or you obviously need a uh, passport. But if you're uh, from one of the major Western countries that has a visa waiver scheme, you do not need a visa. The roads, as I said, fantastic numbering system. Um, all of the town names are in English and Irish. And the Irish is always in italics. Um, motorways are designated M, as you'd expect, but there are not many of them. Then there are N roads, and N1 to N50 are the bigger national primary roads, and 51 to 99 are the national secondary roads, and they're shown in green. And then you get regional roads, which have an R in front of them. And obviously these all get smaller as you go along. Uh, followed right at the end by L roads, the small, the very, very small local roads. Um, if you know the 1600 miles of the Wild Atlantic Way, that's quite long uh, and that will take quite a long time. So people do ask me, where's my favorite bit of the Wild Atlantic Way? And I've got to say, it's um, you know, if you're only going to be able to do a short trip for maybe a week. The best places for me are right down in the southwest. You've got that's the best riding, the best scenery, and the best places to see. So that is what what I would do. And you, know, I would for a week's tour, I would do something like you know, if you're going from England on your own bike, I would ride through Snowdonia to get the ferry from uh, Anglesey and go across to Dublin, spend a night in Dublin. That's probably enough. Go out and enjoy. You know, some of the uh, hospitality of uh, uh, the pubs in Dublin, 
and then get across Ireland fairly quickly. You actually use a bit of motorway. The centre of Ireland is not the bit you want to be spending a lot of time in. You want to get to the west coast. And then I would go south on the Wild Atlantic Way from near Castle Bar all the way around to Kinsale near Cork uh, and end up going and seeing the... Uh, uh, go to Blarney Castle and then I would ride back across Ireland to Waterford and then get the ferry from Ross Lair. and that will take about a week um, you know, as I say you, you could do it a lot quicker but you really don't want to Rent, um, rental motorbikes in Ireland this is really for my more public talk where I get quite a few visitors from overseas uh, looking you know uh, tuning in to hear these talks so you can only really <coughs> excuse me, rent bikes in Belfast and Dublin. Uh, as I said earlier, there are not many places to rent bikes. Uh, Belfast Harley-Davidson is the only place that rent Harley-Davidson's currently. Uh, there is uh, uh, a BMW rental place called Lemon Rock. They're based in Dublin. There is a somewhere called Killarney Harley Rentals, but I think they've actually, I'm not sure if they're still trading I found their website, but it looks, I tried to call them, but there was, you know, I didn't, I didn't get through. So nowhere else rent Harleys. Um, Belfast are a great bunch of guys out there and you can get like a Heritage, a Road King or an Ultra, you know, for people if you're coming in from overseas or Lemon Rock. Um, they do rental bikes and tours. Uh, they're based near uh, Dublin Airport. Their bikes are very, very good. Uh, I know the guys who run them, uh, who run the company. They're very passionate motorcyclists, but they're uh, BMWs. They do have one Harley. Um, I know because I sold it to them. Um, but they do offer tours. Um, here's a few of their tours. So they're, they're a good bunch of lads. Okay, finally, a few geological facts about Ireland. And not many people know this. Um, it is, this was quite surprising. My wife found out about this when we were in Ireland. So how about these facts? Um, about 600 million years ago, uh, Ireland was in two parts. One of those parts is just off what is now the east coast of America. And the other part, was just off what is uh, uh, West Africa. And over about 150 million years, they traveled towards each other and crashed together. Crashed is probably the wrong term. They collided very, very slowly. Um, but that formed the mountains in Northwest Ireland near what is now Donegal. But then here's the surprising bit. Ireland was at the equator back then and it had the climate of a desert. And about 400 to 300 million years ago, <coughs> um, Ireland sank beneath the sea. And that's why it's so um, lush and so uh, it can grow such great grass now because of what happened when it was beneath the sea. It got lots of um, its fertile nature from being underwater. And about 150 million years ago, Ireland got on the move again and it started traveling north and rising from beneath the sea as it did. And it reached its current position about 25 million years ago when it bumped into uh, uh, the, the rest of the UK. 5,000-ish years ago, actually, I think that might be wrong. It might be longer than that. Ireland was sort of covered in ice as part of the Ice Age. And that formed the very rounded nature of lots of the hills. If you remember the photos of the 12 Pins Mountains, they were very rounded tops. And that was caused by the Ice Age. But... The most important fact about Ireland um, and its uh, history happened 261 years ago because 261 years ago, Guinness was invented. So uh, cheers all. Um, I think that's the end of the talk now. Uh, and so I will stop sharing the screen once these pictures, uh, they're the same pictures from earlier once they've finished and um, we'll turn the microphones back on for uh, any questions you have let me just do that unmute so you should all be back Good. Gary, Gary yes. may I ask you a question of course uh, Gary um, 
the gap of Duke Dunlow, um, yeah. uh, did you see any evidence of the horse and carts that used to take people up there um, 150 years ago, whenever it was? I most certainly did. Um, oh, they still run them now out of Killarney. Uh, they're run by uh, travellers. Uh, yeah. I can't remember what they're called. And just beyond where that I took that photo, when, once you're heading towards Killarney and you go past that lake, you've got to be very careful. You don't want to go riding around there too fast on a BMW and nearly uh, have an, uh, uh, a meeting with a horse. I don't know who did that once. Yeah, it was me. And, All right. Um, yeah. So you do need to be really careful and they are there. And uh, yes, so you can go okay. trotting. Is that what it's called? I, I can't remember, but um, I'm really pleased to hear that because I'm, I'm working on my great-grandfather's notes. Uh, he travelled around the Ring of Kerry in 1904. And he described that going up in the, in the horse and carts and how old women were trying to sell him pachin. Wow. <laughs> so I want to retrace his route. And so everything you've said tonight to me has just been utterly fantastic. And um, I'm so pleased to hear those horse and carts are still going around. There. there are, in fact, two places. Downstairs. There are two places where they do that. They do it on the start of the Gap of Dunlow. Yeah. But also, as you're going out of Killarney, you head east and then south to go up to Ladies View. Just as you're coming out of Killarney, they do it there as well. <laughs> oh, wonderful. But, yeah, so two places, yeah. 1904, wow. 1904, yeah, and he, well, and he went on a couple of railway lines that aren't there anymore and things like that. But yes, I've got his notes and that's what I'm basing my trip on. So Fantastic, yeah, yeah. Right, so any other questions? You know, it's, um, Quite a place to go to, I've got to say. Who's been there before? Yeah. yeah. Oh, quite a few yeah. then, yeah. So you'll uh, you'll recognise a lot of, uh, of what I've said. Bev, you didn't need to put your hand up. I knew you'd been there before. <laughs> <laughs> I remember you taking those photos. They're lovely. They were... Was, we had an incredible week, didn't we, Bev? The weather was just yeah. fantastic. Perfect. And, if I'd known in advance, I could have ditched one bag off the back of my bike. <laughs> All the warm weather gear and wet weather gear. It rained every day we were there. We went to the Doolin Bike Fest. I think it was two years ago. And it was typical Irish weather. It rained every day. Thank heavens for wetsuits. <laughs> yeah, thank you for that. You know, on the, you know, on the, on the Ring of Kerry, Gary, Yes. Uh, um, right at the western end, there's a lovely sandy beach you mentioned. And there's a like a little little stone jetty that sticks out. Yep. Uh, I took my bike to the end of that and had the devil's own job getting it off. <laughs> <laughs> Gary. Yes. Gary, I've done three three chapter rides over there, and all I would suggest if you're going to go to Cribs Causeway, I would ride down and do the <laughs> Titanic <laughs> Museum in Belfast. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I would. I would. Well. Yeah. John um, Goldsway, sorry. Yeah, yeah. I've um I've been there and I think it's well worth it. It's uh it's quite a it's quite a place to go and see. Um particularly when you're looking out of the museum building and you can see where they've marked out on the on the ground where they actually built the Titanic. Um compared to today's ships, of course it isn't very it's not very huge, but uh it's well worth going to see. It's uh quite a story. You need Quite a few hours to go around the uh, Titanic Museum. Yeah, we, we knocked it out in about 90 minutes. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, that's pushing it, yeah. yeah. Gary? Yes. Uh, on the trip before, and I agree with your comment about don't stay in Dublin because it's not uh, particularly cheap and I didn't find it particularly quite friendly. But if you were coming over, I did the Hollyhead Crossing, I think similar to the one you suggested in Fredonia. Where is your sort of first stop when you get off? If you're staying outside Dublin, what kind of area is your first night well, stay? When I take a group out there, I always take, uh, I, we always do stop in Dublin um, because you know, people want to go and buy a T-shirt at the Harley dealer the next morning. People want to go to um, you know, the, I can't remember what the main drinking area is called in Dublin. They want to go and see Temple it. Bar. Temple Bar. Yeah, 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 Temple Bar. 
and uh, thank you. But mine, I, I, I would normally go from there right across Ireland and stay um, uh, at uh, Linane on the Killary Harbour. But that takes nearly a whole day to get across there. So um, I don't have a good answer you know, if you arrive there and then want to stay somewhere near Dublin. I don't know. I've never actually done that. Thanks. Hi, Melissa. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? Yeah, may I ask um, a question about security, bike security over there, um, all the places you've stayed at. Um, uh, is it reasonably safe to, to park your precious metal there? Yes. Okay. Um, and why, why I say that is because um, when we went, when say when Bev and I went and we took a small group, we either stayed in places that did have secure parking, like the pub we stayed in actually had a car park out the back. Um, so you, know, you can find places to, uh, that do have secure parking or at least stay in remote places um, uh, that, you know, where you're fairly certain you, know, you, you tuck your bike away around the back of the hotel and it's probably gonna be safe. In Dublin, when we were there, we stayed in a hotel that had a private car park, but it wasn't a great hotel. Um, I now stay uh, in one just um, in about five minutes uh, taxi ride from the centre of Dublin. I can't remember what it's called. I'll find out if somebody wants it. Um, but yeah, I normally, you, you can find places. When I'm on a tour out there and running a tour, that's what we always do. We always choose hotels by the fact that they're good hotels, reasonably priced, but most importantly, they have secure parking. You can find them, yeah. Great, thank you. Yeah. Sorry. Yes. Um, what you said on, on your uh, demonstration there that kind of like uh, Ireland is quite biker friendly, is that considered quite good because we got family on the east side above Dublin and one of the notable things with um, Irish is their cars have got lots of scratch marks. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a that's a very good that's a very good point, Robert. Um, they are biker friendly, but just don't get that friendly close to them. Um, no, I mean the people are very biker friendly, but yeah, they're. Um, you have to be slightly well. Whenever you're riding a motorcycle at any time, you're obviously very aware of what could happen. And um, yeah, maybe they don't look after their cars as well as some other parts of, of the world. Yeah, I didn't feel unsafe at all when I was over there. I've got to say, and I've done it, you know, like two or three times. Okay. Yeah, I've, I've got to say, uh, there is a huge difference between Northern Ireland and Southern Ireland in the degree of friendliness. I don't know if you've experienced any of that. I find Arden lovely. We've got half the families from Arden, so we've got our own pub and everything. So. Yeah, I, f I find you know, um, Southern Ireland, you know, much, I find it much friendlier than Northern Ireland. Maybe that's just me, but uh, that's how that I feel. That must be just you, I think. <laughs> Sorry? I think that must be just you then, Gary. It could be, yeah. It could be, yeah. There's certainly a different pace of life. Mm. Oh yeah, yeah. Would you would you agree with you? I said that you know for those of you who have been, I've said that you know, you would need at least a week to do that sort of half of um, the tour that I would recommend. You know, you can do it quicker, but you know, would you agree that a week is about the right amount of time to do Southern Ireland? On mine, Gary, on the chapter rides. I'm fortunate enough, we, we have a house in Doolan, which is two miles from the cliffs. Yeah. Um, so the first year we went left from Dublin, from Waterford all the way around up to Galway and then across home. Okay, and then the following year we, and then the following year we went north into Dublin, Belfast, up to Londonderry and Donegal and we got down as far as Doolan and then back across the country. Yeah. And that's what we found we could do in, in a week. Yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah, yeah. And did you did you feel you you weren't really rushing to do that, were you? No, we we're probably doing 130, 140 miles a day and taking sights, etc. In as well. 
Yeah, I'd say that's about right. That's about what I would reckon. And Gordon can tell you about the off-roading we did. <laughs> Go on in, Gordon. No, I think it was just a very interesting day's ride, Brian, and the grass down the middle of the road was really interesting, yeah. <laughs> but it was hilarious. <laughs> but God it's, it's interesting, Glenna, Glenna, you mentioned the rain. I know we had, we had a day of rain, but I actually, I mean, we did the Ring of Kerry in beautiful sunshine and, um, you know, the, the weather's changeable. Um, well, the day yeah, that we, we, we had a beautiful we... trip there. Sorry, Glenna? Yeah. Yeah. No, we had a good we had a good time. The weather was good. I said the day that we uh Yes. Oh yeah, it was. I mean the day that we drove through the grass and that, that big that narrow thing, that was a beautiful day. <laughs> it was it the sunshine. It was <laughs> but you know what? The funny thing was everybody pretended that we were supposed to be there. <laughs> I, we I were, didn't know. We I didn't know any better. I thought, okay, this is where we're supposed to be. It was great. <laughs> we were supposed to be there. <laughs> <laughs> Gary, do do you, Gary, do you use the Kill Rush ferry? Uh, I do. Yeah. Right. Yep. Um, uh, that's across the River Shannon, is it? Yeah, it's just up from um, Mel's place, Trump Tower. Yep. We did that. <laughs> yep, I've done that. Do that every time. Yeah, it's um, it's a bit of fun, isn't it? You know, there, there's some of the memorable things. You know, like you were saying, like you, know, Gordon and Glenna were saying about you, know, the grass down the middle of the road. It's those fun incidents that you, know, you look back on and you think, actually, that was a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. You know, even though it was not exactly scary, but you, know, a bit of a challenge at the time. When I think back on all the you know, all the tours that I've done, it is those funny sort of events that, that yeah. you really remember fondly. Yeah. And some of the silliest things happen. You think, oh, yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Yeah. Gary, you asked the question if a week is enough. I did that Southern Ireland trip that you mentioned, starting in Dublin, going all down around coastal way, up to Luton and then into Galway and across again. 10 days and I would say a nice slow pace you could take a lot in I would say after that you're probably just getting it's getting very samey unless you're carrying farther on into Northern Ireland which I, I didn't want to do so I'd say a week is good 10 days is probably enough unless you're going to carry on north um, yeah. and you will see a lot of things and it's spectacular but it's it's kind of the same spectacular if that makes sense like yeah. Gull and the Ring of Kerry, they're, they're kind of similar. Cliffs of Mower has got that wow factor. It's like a giant a green seven system. And it is beautiful, but the scenery is very much the same unless you get out towards the Burren, where it's like you're on the moon. It's a lunar landscape. They're really, really yeah. odd. Yeah. No, I, I absolutely agree with you. You know, Doing half of it is plenty. You know, yeah. And, uh, you, know, you see some fabulous places. So uh, just on half of it. Can I just um, make a bit of a pitch that, you know, there's been a, a, a few mentions or, or a little mention of uh, Northern Ireland and there's always been a bit of a, you know, you sort of get a feeling there's always a bit of a stigma with, you know, still with Northern Ireland and it is the most fantastic place to visit. Um, you know, you go, you go down the Antrim coast and it's as nice as any oasis spectacular as any road anywhere else in uh, in ireland uh, you go to county down and again the scenery is absolutely spectacular and uh, you know I, I think for people who do miss out northern ireland they're missing a hell of a lot really you know there's a, a lot of good places to go there and and it's still of course because of uh uh, you know, it's not that many years back, of course, that, you know, there was, you know, there were the troubles. And I think people tend to sort of avoid it a little bit. And I'd say, oh, don't, you know, you're missing out on a lot. Yeah, I'd agree with you. Yeah, there are, you know, I've not ridden some of the places that you just described, but I've spoken to lots of people who have said yeah. you know, just exactly what you've said. And uh, you know, I think, you know, um, I'd love to go and spend more time in Northern Ireland. Would really love to, and you know, especially on the on that northern coast near um, 
you know, right up on the north end, down down the eastern coast as well, down you know, as you're coming down to uh, to Belfast. It yeah. looks fantastic. The Antrim Coast Road is spectacular. Yeah. Is that nice? you, you're looking like Paul and Lynn and um, and Posh Bird and uh, I think Dave Winry, we were all at um, Killarney Bike Fest in 2006. Do you remember? Yeah. Absolutely. You mentioned you mentioned the bands that played there. We we saw Roy Wood, and he had us all singing. I wish it could be Christmas every day at the top of their voices. Uh, and Susie Quattro, and she was absolutely brilliant. Susie Quattro was fantastic. And and I feel Bonnie Tyler as well. Lost lost in France. Uh, I don't remember her. No, I oh, you, were, you were drunk six. that night. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was lost in France. <laughs> conducting the bikes. Yeah, oh. <laughs> yeah. well, that was a great, great was rally fabulous. ride out. Yeah. Well, great rally ride. Out. Where did you go? We went to Killarney um, Bike Fest. No, no, no. I mean on the ride out. Um, we did Dingle and we did we did the Ring of Kerry. And we went all over the place. That was the parade, was, wasn't it? It was the, yeah, parade, the parade where we yeah. went so into many Killarney. And um, uh, we all sort of stopped at one stage and Paul got off the bike and he was conducting everybody's horns, weren't he? <laughs> Fabulous. Yeah. Yeah, Great you led the ride, didn't Great you, Paul? Crack. Sorry? Didn't you lead the ride? No. <laughs> no, no. I've, got, I've, got, no. I've got lots of that was, that was That was the, um, the, the rally I'm ride from the, from the hotel. 2006. Yeah, that was great. 2006. It was an awesome, awesome rally. Yeah. Great. I've still got the T-shirt too. <laughs> sure, I have to. I know, we're here. It's a bit anymore, though. It's shrunk. I'm <laughs> just <laughs> <laughs> it. Susie Quattro played somewhere else. Did she play in Saint Tropez one year or something? She was, yeah. I agree with you, she yeah. was very good. Yeah. yeah, she was excellent. Excellent, yeah. I can remember having a bit of a crush on her when I was a young man. So uh, <laughs> we all did. We all did. Yeah, why not? <laughs> Still wears the leather trousers. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you've got just the better a, just a mere seventy-two like now, I think. <laughs> all right. Well, look, folks. It's um, quarter past eight, and um, yeah. So I hope that's uh, been a bit Question. of fun for you. And um, Question, Gary. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Go on. Yeah. Um, are you going to do as you did a couple of weeks ago and leave us all gossiping? <laughs> yes. Yeah. 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 I'm. I'm going to leave you talking while I go and have my dinner and a beer. <laughs> thank you. So, thank you, Gary. Thank you, Gary. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Great. And, um, I'll see you after my dinner. Take care. Enjoy your dinner. Okay, enjoy it. <laughs> oh, thanks for this one. Good. Cheers. Good. Glad you enjoyed it. And. Uh, be safe and get out there riding again you know, a bit more. It would be nice to ride in some groups again, wouldn't it? Oh, I've yeah. got a broken lace. That was nice. Sure. Yeah. You've got a broken what? I've got a broken lace. Oh. Broken lace? <laughs> yep. Oh, tragic. In other words, a spoke. Uh, oh, right. Sorry. Oh, yeah. All right. Well, I'll come back later after you finish your chat. See you later. See you, folks. Bye, Bye. 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 B